Welcome back. I am in conversation with dancer, choreographer, actor, model, and what not, Anmol Mishra. You are also studied physics, I am told. Yes, yes, I did. And you are a personal trainer, and we are, of course, going to talk about your films. Tell me something about physics. Why physics? Why on art? Well, when I first started, um, when I was finishing off my 12th, I actually had more of an interest in physics and math. Physics and math. In engin then engineering. I was, I was a nerd at the time. Mm -hmm. I was very much into books. The world of physics is, must be missing you. You just didn't decide oh, to take no, physics. Oh, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, I did it because um, I became an Australian citizen. And when your uh, education there is, is subsidized for citizens. I think if I went there as an Indian, I'd probably just have to mortgage my house. Mm -hmm. But as a citizen, it's not too bad. So I had a dream of doing physics when I was younger. I had the opportunity. I had at least some, I could adjust my time. And so I went back and um, I, did, I did a small thesis as well. Mm -hmm. But I, I would not make a career in it. It was just something as a Absolutely. child. Absolutely. You know, I would just, want to just do. Just an interest, passing interest, which you tried to do, take it a little bit forward. Uh, Anmol, you see, I mean, like, you have also done a couple of films. Hmm. And what is of interest to me at this point in time as we're talking is your upcoming film, which you have very fascinatingly titled Guwahati to Kohima. Tell me something about uh, that film uh, because uh, my viewers will be really interested in that. What is it about? It's about two protagonists in Delhi who get into trouble with the Delhi cops. And the cops essentially push them out of town and they follow them. Mm -hmm. And one of the protagonists is from Guwahati. Uh, Guwahati, okay. Yeah. So they have the bright idea of going to the northeast because no one would have any idea of following them there. Except with the police, you can call around, you can make calls, you can, you, you can pull in favors and you can track people if you wanted to. If the police want to make your life hell, they'll make your life hell. And that's basically so what So this happens. group comes to Guwahati? Comes to Guwahati. And there on the story begins. Exactly. Takes yeah. off, rather. Yeah. So with the Northeast, I guess as a result of neglect or because of um, some events that have happened in the past, what we consider development in terms of roads outside the cities has not happened as much as in the rest of the country. So once you leave the city, once you start going to more remote villages, you still find customs and traditions that were the same 100, 200, 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. And from a human, from an anthropological perspective, it's, it's really fascinating because I, I can't make up those things in a studio. They exist. I have to go to them. Find out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the second thing is that Assam has instruments that you don't find in the rest of the country. And... I, with the interest that I have in dance, I think I can make a fusion. Um, I can fuse some of Assamese music with a bachata or a zouk background and actually have Western dances on Assamese music. So, so it's those so two influences. So the cast is going to be an international cast, is it? Yep, yep. Of your so, film? Yeah. There'll, there'll be professional dancers in the film as well? Yes, yes. So there'll be one professional dancer mm -hmm. um, with this and then I want to take the backdrop with local dancers. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a friend of mine who I worked with in Sydney for a very long time. I've actually known her for 12, well, 11 years. Um, and she'll be playing a Russian backpacker who comes in, which is, I think, quite reasonable because what I saw in Mumbai is that the single biggest group of backpackers coming to our country are Russians because of, I guess, a, a cheaper standard of living and, yeah. you know, for, for various, various reasons. And more, for, more because we're more connected to Russia in the past than we were to the rest of the world. Now, 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 you see, I mean, that's very interesting, uh, I mean, your ventures. Now, now, tell me something about, you know, when, when we talk about dance, uh, I asked you this question about you being an Indian and people expecting you right. to dance, uh, quote unquote, Bollywood, or if not proper classical Indian dances. But your partners, when you have uh, part, took part in all these Western competitions, Western dance competitions, have been all Westerners. Right. So how was the, you know, how was it uh, sort of, was there apprehension in your partner? Again, coming back, it's a follow up to my earlier question actually. Hmm. Just wanted to understand the people's mind. I think from an artistic perspective, there are less there's, barriers. There are less barriers. Yeah, so when you have two artists working together, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. From. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's more the audience mm -hmm. which comes in with a prejudice. Having said this, I've also done Bollywood shows. But what I've noticed is the biggest influence in Bollywood now is not classical Indian dancing. It's a form of jazz. Essentially, they're, they're moves yeah. from jazz, funk, and hip-hop that have found their way in. And the choreography is essentially jazz, funk, and hip-hop. 
you don't see, I mean, Hema Malini was at one point of time and uh, Sri Devi, there, there were a lot of trained classical dancers, more female than that male. That era is gone now. That era is gone now. Mm -hmm. So people take training, but they take training in jazz or funk or hip hop, mm -hmm. and then they come in, they do their moves, and then, you know, they move on. Mm -hmm. But having said this, I would like to do at least some training in classical Indian because it pricks me a little bit that I'm Indian and I haven't trained in any of the Indian classical forms and I've so gone around going the So you're going to world. do that? I would I like to, I think that yeah. is going to make you, uh, whatever gap you have, complete. I think so too. Fill in the gaps. It, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep, at some so that's your plan now? Yep. Okay. Now, now another thing is, uh, you know, the proliferation of reality dance shows on Indian television. Right, yeah. Uh, how do you look at this trend? I actually think it's fantastic because there's, there actually is a, a deep-rooted passion among our population to go out and do different things from what was expected, say, 10 years ago. You know, people who are growing up nowadays don't just want to go to school and, and pick up a book and, you know, doctor and engineer and whatever, essentially, I grew up with. Um, also, I think the sign of a healthy artistic community, a healthy performing community, is also a sign of a vibrant culture. So even though the influences on our dancing today are yeah. mainly Western, the fact that we are getting up and dancing, I think it has a lot to say in terms of our culture and where we come from in the way that we view art and culture. Mm -hmm. So just from that perspective itself, I'm very positive on the fact that there is such a proliferation of dance shows. So you're happy about it? There's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely. It's not that people are just competing and some... Oh, yeah, I mean, that, it's fine. That, that's true. That mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's always show but business. But it also, also helps in bringing out talents from remote exactly. corners of yep. the country. And it makes you people know? aware of dance. And the, the huge platforms they're getting. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that note, we'll go for another short break, but stay on, we'll be right back. Thank you.